What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. This month I had the honor and the privilege of being able to interview my friend and dear brother in the Lord, Dr. Scott Callahan. In this segment from that interview, Dr. Callahan interacts with an argument made by progressives like Nadia Boltz Weber and others who claim to be pro-choice Christians. She says that Christians and Jews have held for a very long time that life begins with the first breath. So people in her camp will attempt to use Genesis 2-7 as well as uh, Ezekiel 37-10 in order to try and justify their position. So... <laughs> I don't even know why I'm asking this question, but first, is Nadia correct? Is there a long standing? <laughs> I think you already answered that. <laughs> is there a long standing Judeo Christian tradition that life begins with the first breath, and not at conception? And second, what is the appropriate way to look at Genesis two seven and Ezekiel? Excuse yeah. me, Ezekiel thirty seven ten. Yeah. So you know, I'm not aware of any such tradition. And he here's the thing: the mere fact that somebody believes something doesn't make it true. So someone believes there's a long-standing tradition. Well, that doesn't make it true. There needs to be some evidence. And the mere fact that someone a thousand years ago believed something doesn't make it true. What they believe uh, doesn't make it true either. But we live in an era of postmodernism where people believe that what they think, what they say, what they believe changes the universe around them. You know, so uh, in one sense, uh, it sort of doesn't matter if there were such a tradition, which I doubt, okay? Um, and is it a widespread tradition? It obviously is not. You know, I'm, I'm not a church historian, but I mean, it is obviously not a widespread tradition. But then again, it, in the end, it doesn't matter. It matters what the Bible says yeah. more than anything else. So, you know, kind of dispense with the side issues. Let's talk about the Bible, right? Yeah, right. So Genesis 2, 7. Then Yahweh God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And so the man became a living being. Okay, so the idea with this line of argumentation is that's the moment he became alive when he breathed. Therefore, breathing is the beginning of life. Well, okay, so let us state the obvious. Adam wasn't born. <laughs> right? <laughs> that was actually the first thought that came to my head. Too. Okay. Now, here's another thing. Eve wasn't born either. And the scripture never says she breathed. Yeah. Does that mean she wasn't alive? I mean, like, like God didn't breathe into her the breath of life. It doesn't say. So was she not alive, but only Adam was? I mean, obviously not. Okay. And the 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 respiration you know breathing really D does that mean life i mean we've discovered an animal an animal that doesn't breathe oxygen i mean you know, I, you know what about fish i mean they don't breathe i mean they sort of breathe with water you know in a different way than us completely different way but is that are, are we being serious when we say that breath is the beginning of life so the meaning of Genesis 2-7, mm -hmm. which we need going into Ezekiel 37-10, is God is the source of all life. And a beautiful thing going on in Genesis 1 and 2 is that at some places, it's not clear if we're talking about the spirit of God or a wind sent from God or breath, because the Hebrew word ruach is the same for all of them. Okay, so it's, it's kind of beautiful, this interaction of these concepts the Holy Spirit of God breathes in the breath of life. So what remains? The Spirit? No, life remains. But here's something. Genesis 1.30 says that some animals, not all, have the breath of life. Now, why not all? Because they're not all talked about, you know. Mm -hmm. So are some animals alive and others not? Because that's the phrase, breath of life, you know, that is being ripped out of context here is my point. So, yeah, you could have found somebody in history who said that life begins when drawing one's first breath, but there are, are reasons why this is an uncomfortable thing to say. Uh, you know, people thought at one time that the earth was the center and the sun went around. They were wrong. Okay, so the, the belief, and, and, you know, one could say because of 
the story in Joshua about the battle about the sun going down, that there is a biblical reason why someone might assume that. And you assume it because your eye sees it. You know, the, these kind of things. They, they were just wrong. Okay, so well-meaning people can believe that life begins at breath and be wrong. And, and this is clearly wrong. Okay, um, so an example of how this is clearly wrong, that's kind of tragic in, in an experience of one of my friends is one of my friends had a baby who was born without lungs. They didn't know this was going to happen. Okay, so the baby wakes up, opens his eyes, closes his eyes, and dies. So the baby was alive. Okay, so this breath argument, it's, it's not even coherent without even getting to the Bible, but then we get to the Bible and see that breathing into Adam the breath of life is God initiating his life of what was formerly dust in the ground. He was not born, okay? All right, so, we, but we need that before going to Ezekiel. So this is very exciting, getting to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. This is the dry bones army in the valley. And they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great military force. Okay, so what's going on here in Ezekiel 37, this favorite passage for revival meetings? You know, <laughs> the dry bones can live again, right? That's right. Okay, <laughs> that's a little bit out of context, but, but not too much if you actually read what comes before and comes after. This is a fantastic passage. What's it talking about, though? It's talking about the resurrection of we experience through the power of the Holy Spirit in the new covenant. That's what it's talking about. Ooh, so if that's true, so let me prove it. But if that's true, it's not talking about receiving the breath of life like Adam. Okay, so, I mean, so it's talking about something different. But check it out. This is Ezekiel 36, 24 to 27. It says, before, and I will take you from the nations, talking to Israel, gather you from all the lands and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. This is priestly purification having to do with you've come in contact with death. I will sprinkle cl clean water on you and you'll be clean. And I, I will cleanse you from all your uncleanness and from all your idols, false worship. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So the stony heart that rebels against God. But verse 27, mm, and I'll put my spirit within you. So this new spirit, my spirit, the spirit of the living God, the one who hovered over the surface of the waters at creation, that spirit I'll put within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you'll be careful to do my judgments. So this is where we see that every believer, every person who's in the new covenant, receiving a new heart, new spirit, after coming to faith in Christ, which was something that wasn't clear at that time uh, when the announcement of the new covenant was happening before it happened, right? Um, but this is what happens with us, is we receive the Holy Spirit of God as new believers. Now, what comes after the dry bones illustration? So this is preparing for the dry bones army resurrection. It's you have to have the spirit in you. To, to come alive again. You know, this is a vision, you know, so, so per se, this didn't happen in the world. Like there wasn't a valley where the people of Israel's bodies were and they were bleached dry bones. This didn't happen. This is a vision and it's supposed to be very obvious what it means. This is the spiritual resurrection of Israel. Okay, so then Ezekiel 37, 11 to 14. Recap. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, so this is what they're saying, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are completely cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says Lord Yahweh, behold, I will open your graves, resurrection, and cause you to come up out of your graves, my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am Yahweh when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, my people. So how much more do you need to emphasize that? This is resurrection. And I will put my spirit in you again, see? 
and you will come to life and I will place you on your own land. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken and done it, declares Yahweh. So th this is not talking about the same thing at all as what happened with Adam. So Adam wasn't born. It's not talking about that. And the Ezekiel passage is beautiful and should be preached in these situations because this talks about what you need. You need a new heart. You need a new spirit. So you would never dare to think that murdering a child in the womb would be okay. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. I've provided links to Dr. Callahan's content in the video description below. Have an awesome rest of your week. And for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.